Okay, so uh, this project is called The Wisdom of Moral <laughs> Principles. Uh, and I should say, uh, again, th this, is, this is collaborative work with my, my postdoc, Fiery Cushman, who's soon to be joining the faculty at Brown University. And he, uh, he's really the driving force behind this research, um, or uh, uh, at least uh, the, the, the first experiment that I'll be, the, that I'll be telling you about. Um, so uh, the, this, this, this project is focused on two moral principles that play an important role uh, in a lot of different contexts, in medical decision making, in decision making about war, and decision making about the, 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 the distribution of resources. The, uh, the first of these is called the action-omission distinction, or the doctrine of doing and allowing. And the, the, this time-honored moral principle basically says is that causing harm actively is worse than causing harm passively. The other one is called the doctrine of double effect, uh, or sometimes called the mean side effect distinction, which basically says that harming somebody as a means to your goal is, is, is worse, or at least can in certain contexts be worse, than harming somebody as a side effect, as collateral damage. So to give you examples from, from a medical context, uh, according to the American Medical Association, it's ethically unacceptable for a doctor to do something actively to cause a patient's death, even if this is, in, this, this, there's variation uh, you know, around the world in how this is viewed, but the, the standard in America is not okay for doctors to actively cause someone's death, even if it's what the patient wants, consents to, et cetera, um, but allowing the patient to die by, by, by withdrawing or withholding treatment, that's okay. Uh, mean side effect distinction in a medical context, this would be, uh, giving, let's say, a, 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 a patient uh, a, a painkiller knowing with, with the intention of causing the patient's death as opposed to giving the patient a painkiller knowing that this will cause the patient's death but the goal is to keep the patient comfortable. In, in, in a war context, the, this, this, uh, this uh, uh, relates to the issue of, of what's sometimes called terror bombing versus strategic bombing. So if you are bombing civilians in order to terrorize them and, 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 and reduce morale and, 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 and help your side win the war, that's terrorism, that's not okay. If you're bombing a military target, knowing that civilians nearby will be killed, that's, that, that's a side effect and that can at least sometimes be considered acceptable. So these, these moral principles have, have, have a long history and, and, are, and, are, and, are, and are considered to be wise principles by many people. The, 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 the guiding principle behind this line of research is that to a, assess the wisdom of these principles, it would help to understand how they work on a cognitive level. Um, and also perhaps even on a neurobiological level. Um, but really we're using neuroscience here, as, I think, as, as, as a tool for understanding cognitive processes. Uh, and the, the analogy, I think, that that's, that's guiding this research in, in, in the background is something like this. Uh, that human moral decision making, uh, the, the, the architecture we use for decision making in general and moral decision making in particular is kind of like the camera that I have and probably similar to, to cameras that you have where it has a number of these automatic settings. So you can take your camera and you can put it in portrait mode or in night mode or in action mode and it automatically configures the settings of the camera to take pretty good pictures for those standard types of photographic situations. Uh, my camera also has a manual mode where you can just adjust everything manually uh, uh, as, as you see fit. And the advantage of the automatic settings is that they're very efficient, that they give you pretty much exactly what you need for typical kinds of situations. The disadvantage is that they're not very flexible. The manual mode is the opposite. It's very flexible. You can do anything with it, but you have to fiddle around. You have to know what you're doing. It's not very efficient. And so you can think of gut reactions as being kind of like the automatic settings on your camera. And you can think of your ability to think and sit back and reflect and think about all of the details in a situation and how they fit together as putting your mind, so to speak, in manual mode. And it's not that the automatic settings are good and the manual mode is bad or vice versa, they're good for different kinds of things. And so one question we can ask about these moral principles is are these moral principles reflecting a, 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 an automatic settings essentially or are they, or, 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 or when we use them are we, are, are we essentially uh, reflective? Are we, are we building on, on a kind of manual mode approach? And so first I want to talk about the action omission distinction. And what we did in, in our first experiment is we gave people moral dilemmas in which you can harm somebody or a allow someone to be harmed in the name of the greater good. So this would be, let's say, pushing somebody out of the way in order to prevent something from harming a, a larger number of people. That would be an active case. Or allowing somebody to be harmed because if you don't allow it, then even more people will, 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 will be killed. Um, and the question is, what is the cognitive difference between going with the action omission distinction? That is saying that the omissions are not as bad as the actions or, 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 or not. And so 
I'm going to first show you some behavioral data. Uh, what we found is that there were some people who, uh, is this a laser pointer? Right. So there are two types of people. So some people uh, abided by the action omission distinction. That is, they said that the, the omissions, harming, allowing people to be harmed in the name of the greater good, is not as bad as, as actively harming people in the name of the greater good. And then you have other people who treated these two things as different. And the question, I have one minute left. Oh my goodness. All right. We're only going to get to, we're not going to get to part two. Um, and what we found is that uh, when that, that, that when people uh, responded to the omissions over the action cases in general, you saw just a lot more activity all over the brain. Um, and it turns out that this was largely driven by, or this was driven pretty much entirely by uh, these people over here, and in particular that when they were thinking about the omissions. So that is, the people who said the action omission distinction doesn't matter. Allowing somebody to die is no better or no worse than actively causing somebody to die. These people are doing a lot more thinking. And based on the, the, the pattern here, it's actually a very surprising kind of brain imaging pattern because you're seeing two different networks of brain regions that are usually anti-correlated. It's usually either this, this midline network here that's up and this outer stuff over here that's down or vice versa. This is not a, an ironclad rule. What we see here is that the people who are saying, I'm going to ignore the action omission distinction, they're, they're, they're doing a lot more cognitive work and in a way where it seems like these two systems that are normally not operative at the same time are both going. This is a time course of activity in one of these regions, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. And the main thing I wanted to show you here is that you've got uh, this, this line here is the outlier. This is, and what this is, is these are the people who said, I'm going to ignore the action omission distinction when they were thinking about those omission cases. That is, the, the extra work seems to be done in those people when they're saying, uh, this is an omission case, but I think that it's just as bad. Um, so I'm basically out of time. But the question I want to leave you with, uh, we normally think of reflection as a good thing. And these seem, people seem to be thinking harder and thinking more reflectively. But at the same time, at least the American Medical Association and a lot of people think that the action omission distinction is a good thing. And it's something that we ought to respect. And these people are giving what many would regard as the normative answer, the people who aren't thinking as much. So who's wise here? The people who are going in uh, using their automatic settings or the people who are in manual mode? And I'm sure there, there's, no, there's no simple answer to that question. Um, but that's what I'll leave you with. And you can ask me later about the second half of the project since I'm out of time. Thanks. Thanks.